Hey everyone, on today's episode of Huber Syndrome, I'm joined by Damiani, and we're getting hyped on Village. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I am Michael Huber, joined by Michael Damiani. How you doing, Yo. Damiani? Yo, ready to return to the village, baby. Dude, you, ten seconds before we started, you're like, can it be May already? Yep. <laughs> yes, yes, please. <laughs> So, we just had a huge blowout, Resident Evil Village. We saw a lot. I want to dive in to the showcase and the Maiden demo, specifically. Uh, so, let's start with the showcase. This trailer, Damiani, this trailer got me hyped as hell. They revealed secrets. The fan theories are already out of control. <laughs> How are you feeling after the showcase? Uh, I, I thought it was... It got me excited, too. From just the visual presentation, how good those environments looked. It, I, I mean, I think maybe it was running. I don't care what it was running on. Whatever it was running yeah. on. I that think it was PS5. Fan, it said PS5. Looked fantastic. The, uh, like the indoors, like the upholstery. Yeah. And that one shot of that chair. I was just like, I want to sit in that same. chair. Same. Same, dude. And, and, dude, it <laughs> makes me feel, it gives me, it gives me RE4 vibes. It gives me like the castle vibes. It makes me think this is what RE4, like, remake RE4, <laughs> like, like, the vibes and the atmosphere. Yeah. It, and it's, like, speaks to me on a personal level. Totally. It's not, like, obviously we're going to compare it to the other Resident Evil games, of course. Mm -hmm. Especially 7, because it's first person. And no disrespect to 7, I'm obsessed with that game. I love it. But just the simple change of aesthetic and vibes going from like backwoods texas chainsaw massacre to gothic castle with shades of vampirism like castlevania meets resident evil 4 hubert yes i know you love raccoon city but yeah. this setting like the like a forest, village, mm -hmm. castle. Like mm -hmm. I said, castle like RE4, but I, a lot of people are just calling it like the mansion. Yeah. Like, it feels like a throwback to RE1. Totally. I think RE1 and RE4 have like the best settings. Yeah. And I think Capcom was smart. Let, let's go back to the setting where people love this series the most. Mm -hmm. So we saw we saw quite a bit of details in this trailer, Damiani. We saw some action. We saw some weapons. We saw a shotgun. We saw a pistol. We saw like a sniper rifle thing. Saw, Classics. saw Ethan shoot an axe out of an enemy's hand, and then later, <laughs> potentially, there's an icon over it, so maybe melee weapons? Yeah, because there, we saw that. We also saw those en those zombies carrying, like, the sword that you shoot yeah. out of their hand, mm -hmm. and it falls down. It's like, yeah, you've always been able to shoot weapons and stuff out of yeah. people's hands, but, yeah, you saw that cursor. You're good. That was such a good catch. Will there be melee? It's first person melee combat. Man, that would uh What if be it's something. like what if it's like a combination of remakes defensive items and it's like instead it's offensive items and it's like a like a st like an impale. You go up, you know, you have a couple charges of, you know, depending on how many swords you pick up and it's just like a gah, or like a decapitation. It, yeah, something. man, I expect it to work something like that or contextual thing. Like the, mm -hmm. you know, like the melee moves from the older games or just, you know, you shoot one in the kneecap and then, like, you got the sword. You can do, like, finisher, like, <laughs> yeah. decapitate them or something. Yeah. Yeah. So some good enemy variety, Damiani, because we remember in 7, a lot of molded. A lot of molded, stuck in those halls. What did you think of the enemy variety? What stood out to you the most? Dude, here? the big boy berserker yes, with yes. that hair. I was fishing. I was fishing. I wanted you to say it. <laughs> no, no, no crap. I mean, yes, we're going to see like the very <laughs> the variety of werewolf stuff that's going to be amazing probably. Yeah. But just the fact you see uh, like a big boy who moves fast yeah. once they wind up. And in first person, it's like in your face. And you yeah. see how close it gets. And you're backing up. And it, it's like you can't back up very fast. So you're just like, I, I love that. I love that type of, you know, intention that that yeah. creates because you panic. Those are panic moments. And totally. you got the ads coming out at you too. I, so, I was just yeah. going to say, I love the ads, dude. I love when there's a giant brute enemy and then a bunch of small scurriers that are like coming at you. Meanwhile, the giant enemy is slowly coming towards. It's so intense. Like they're that like <laughs> phys like the intimidating presence there, but I have to say the the sisters, the tall lady's uh, daughters 
the fact that like we see so many times trying to shoot them and it looks like nothing is working and nothing. you have to wonder what is going to be the thing is this some is that an enemy is this like the new tyrant is this yeah. the new mr x where you can't kill them you just have to keep running when you encounter them seriously because i'm um, thinking back to wesker boss fights in five you know he's dodging bullets Mm -hmm. You gotta, like, throw rockets at him. Remember that whole thing? He's, yeah. like, holding the rocket and then the like, kill-off attacks. Shoot him in the back. Like, you need a buddy, dude. Yeah. To distract him. So we saw some good weapons and then some enemies. And that leads us to the shop, Damiani. The yeah. shop returns, dude. The Duke. The Duke, man. The Duke. Making in, a living. Making a living. Uh, Producer Peter Fabiano from Capcom in the demo, or the showcase, he said... Uh, you know, the Duke will show up in multiple spots. He's going to show up periodically. And that excites me. You know, obviously we think of the merchant in Resident Evil 4. But what is it about that, Damiani? What is it about the merchant and a shop that is just so addicting in a Resident Evil game? It's always, it's the personality. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's like, it's also, but it's also respite. Yeah. It, they, they, I think they placed them very it's very intelligent where they put them because it's usually after a stretch of action mm -hmm. or at the very beginning. So, like, you know, at the very beginning, you know shit's about to go down. You should probably stock up. Yeah. Or it's after a stretch. It's like, man, I've just like, got all this stuff. Let me cash in now. Dude, it's after a boss fight, when you yeah. cash in, so satisfying. It's, it, yeah, it is one of the most gratifying things in the game. And, like, those upgrades. As you upgrade weapons, man, it feels so good. What's your first upgrade? I'll probably go with, like, pistol first. Pistol, Because it's, like, dude. the pistol bread and shotgun. butter. Yep. Just because, like, shotguns, for me, is meant to, like, get get back, get back. So buy yeah. me a second so, like, I can get reload my, like, pistol and then go back to you. Yeah. I'm always wary about the first few weapons because you know you're going to get those big boy upgrade, like the, totally. sorry, the better versions of them. I know. You freaking upgrade the pistol and then all of a sudden they give you a better one. Yeah. Makes me the, nervous. What's going to be the what's gonna be the magnum of this game? Yeah. <laughs> magnum <laughs> rounds, dude. Is it silver bullets in them? Yeah. Dude. I hope. It's got to be silver bullets. Just like a few placed, like getting one silver bullet is like freaking gold. That'd be so cool. Can I ask you one quick question, Huber? I don't know if this has come up in any of our discourse, but obviously we got werewolves in this game, and we're yeah. assuming there's like people keep saying vampires when they mm -hmm. refer to the mm -hmm. tall lady. Yeah. Do you think there's gonna be any kind of vampire versus werewolf showdown in this game? 100%. <laughs> you can count on it. And I love the idea of. Taken on these epic mythologies, you know, werewolves, vampires, but with the bioweapon Resident Evil flavor. The details, some some revealing details, not only in the Maiden demo, but in the showcase as well. Uh, we hear Lady Dimitrescu on the phone saying, mm -hmm. you know, Ethan escaped. Mother Miranda, I regret to inform you that Ethan Winters has escaped that fool Heisenberg. Because he is in my castle and has already proven too much for my daughters to handle. So it leads me to believe that something is going on with Ethan and they need to like keep him trapped for some reason. What if they're like siphoning his blood? What if his blood is important? There's so many different ways this can go. What are you? Uh, what are your leading uh, I, theories? I expect we're gonna find like a big reveal that Ethan's. We don't know everything about Ethan. There's gonna be something about Ethan. Yeah. About their identity that's gonna come to light in this game. Yeah. I think it also ties into Chris as well. Yes. I need because like, dude, my mind races because Lady Dimitrescu has tyrant vibes. She's tall as hell. She's a little on the pale side when she extends her claws it looks identical to a tyrant's Tyrant. blade hand so you know then i'm thinking about resident evil 5 and all of that progenitor virus lore of you know ancient history of before the pyramids and flowers and extra long life and increased strength and intellect and then even more recent history like spencer and Marcus and Oswald are like going back into the 50s and the 60s and you know t researching all of this Any virus way. history this could easily be tied you, yeah you mentioned a decade that is mentioned in this game yes 1958 maiden demo Damiani 
What do you think? What do you think? Of, what's your theory on this Maiden demo? Uh, one, I want to say it was pretty good for now. I was a little weary about no combat, no defensive. I thought it was just going to be a bunch of just like cheap, quick scares, maybe, and that that was it. And there would be like, oh, there's probably a chase sequence at, at the end. And, you know, there was a little bit of a chase, but they still had that mystique going where I think they gave you nice stretches of just take your time figure out some simple puzzles and they teased a lot of good things in there like nailed a really good atmosphere just mm. fun to stop look at everything slowly it was like that old school re vibe where i'm like combing over everything observing stuff finding things within things like love that that's like classic re to me yeah just taking a knee looking through every crack like the monsters banging on the the wooden barricade and i'm like please come out please break free of yeah. that barricade like i, I, I am a willing were, sacrifice I, I walked right up to it i was like yeah. come on get me get yeah. let's see what happens yeah. I, I wanted to see all of that like i walked up to the the note says don't take the door won't lead to salvation yeah. uh i did a normal after my first playthrough i ran right to that door i'm like okay take yeah. me now like yeah, what's gonna take happen me. Yeah. <laughs> uh the bone necklace yeah. One of the, is the new dummy finger, and I am convinced, man. I'm convinced there's no practical use for this. To me, my mind immediately went to the old lady in the second trailer, and she's wearing some like ornamental bone type necklace attire. Uh, so my mind went to we're playing as her in this maiden demo. That old lady we see in that is who we're playing now. What do you think? Interesting. Because it's called Maiden, and there's mm -hmm. that entry, the kind of like, oh crap moment is when you read the entry in that room, the wine room, mm -hmm. which says how to make that, that vintage uh, wine, and it's like the Maiden spirit or whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. And you're like, oh wait, that's, is that, that's me? <laughs> oh no. So I thought, it, I mean, I kind of, maybe it's just bias. I thought maybe like you, you're like a, a younger person because there was also the entries. I like, we don't know when this is either. Mm -hmm. There's just Seems the like 58. We see the journals, so the, but it the, could be a misdirect for sure. Yeah, it could yeah. be a misdirect. So. Yeah. You see the stories about these maidens, and then you, there's a part where you see the clothes burning in the fireplace, and you go, it looks like my clothes. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing this for a while. It's like the, the whole downstairs life cycle. So I wonder if you're just like another young villager. But the twist yeah. at the end, where my theory is that the tall lady, she refers to you like you're something of a, someone of importance. Yeah. Because she says, like, oh, finally, like, we finally get to meet or finally get to face to face or whatever. Why would you say that to a nobody? Yeah. So we finally meet. <laughs> That seemed like there might have been something more, but then like you do get looks like you're killed, but you don't know. Maybe it's a uh, maybe they're blood converting lines, you, dude. Yeah. Bloodlines, ancient bloodlines. Hubert, this is my prediction. Okay. The maiden is a boss in the main game. Your dude, character final you played boss. is going to be a mo boss, or like a mid boss, and it's like some game changing revelation. I like that. And dude. you get the bone necklace from them. Dude, you kill an enemy, you don't really, you don't know exactly what's going on, you take her out, and then the necklace, that'd be a really cool connection, Damiani. Speaking go. of the connections, Mia works mm -hmm. for this organization, the connections, has been briefly, uh, briefly alluded to in Resident Evil 7. Uh, we also got a Los, I, I, I saw this online, credit to, I was doing some Resident Evil 4 touch-up, and I had forgotten about this reference, Los Illuminados, mm -hmm. referenced in the newest Resident Evil anime film, uh, which oh. which I don't really like, but they're still around. Los Illuminados. Do you think any callbacks to them or or Spencer or Wesker, or is this going to be mostly self-contained with just a few references here and there? What do you think, Tony? My thing is, I think it's going to be mostly self-contained with a few references. Mm -hmm. I think the, the stuff with Chris. I think Chris and Ethan's identity are going to be the big thing. There'll probably be some connection between that, and that also connects to like the greater series lore. 
but Capcom saying this wraps up Ethan's story, I, mm-hmm. I think that's the focus of this one. Mm-hmm. I, I think after eight, there'll be a setup in this Huber. There'll be a set in this for where the series is going next, or like the bigger story. Yeah, dude. Shout out to shout out to Capcom for as much as I freaking forever, as long as I live, will miss Albert Wesker. <laughs> shout out to them. Managing to make compelling villains. Dude, the Baker family is so memorable, so awesome. And now we got Tall Lady's family out of control. Like, we've barely seen this game, we've barely touched this game, and she is already an icon. You know how hyped I get with Resident Evil? Maybe I'm just overly hyped, but honestly, just in that Maiden demo alone, it already feels magical. It feels a step up from Resident Evil 7. Like you were saying, just the vibes and the aesthetic speaking to you. I'm also really down for more combat this time around. Uh, Seven, you know, a little more slow paced. Things kind of erupt near the end. But I'm really excited to be let loose in this village and have it feel like a constant, overwhelming threat. Like, I'm here for those vibes. I'm, yeah. You want that, like, RE4 opening village moment in this game. Yeah. And yeah, the thing, the f- best final thing I could say is that I'm absolutely looking forward to. I said this after I finished the Maiden demo. That first playthrough for me is so intense. I'm so timid. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm full of anxiety. I'm watching you. I- I'm so careful. Yeah. It, 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 going from that vibe, which is what I think is the creator's intent, to once you know all the tricks, how RE playthroughs change mm-hmm. after that, it's like. Even the demo, it was so clear after that. Like, that's such a good feeling in Resident Evil. I love that. You're so right, because as soon as I saw one of the daughters on the staircase, that really, really, like, Haunting of Hill House level creepy vibes, you barely see her out of the corner of your eye. The second time through, I immediately chased her up the stairs and was like, hey, 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 you, hey. And she, like, triggered and started to attack me. But yeah, dude, just the way the playthroughs change, start doing speed runs. 10 out of 10, Tomiani. Good stuff. Also, calling it right now. Mark my words, draft your tweets. Little disappointed with reverse. I know the, the oh. people are disappointed. <laughs> when you finish Village, you will unlock Mercenaries Mode. That'll be the secret. <laughs> That's the yeah. secret reveal. That is the big okay. Easter egg drop. No, like, Albert Wesker, Orochimaru body transfers. We're talking just a nice, classic, hey, you beat the game? Check out Mercenaries. I mode. wish. <laughs> I, I wish, man. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Make it happen, please. <laughs> Thanks so much, Damiani. Residual Village, coming soon. Love and respect. <laughs>